What's good, y'all? What's the numbers TV? It's your boy, Paul Rowe. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already. And like a video if you appreciate the content that Paul Rowe and What's the Numbers I provided. Today we back with another profile piece. This one is on Chino Anthrax. Real name, Jose Rodrigo Archega Gamboa. In this video, we're going to take a look at his early life growing up in Sinaloa, Mexico. Back when he had dreams of becoming a military pirate or architect. Next, we will look at his Instagram fame and rise to power in one of the world's most powerful drug cartels. And lastly, we will look into the case that was put in behind bars and the reason he fled the United States while on federal release and returned to Mexico where he was killed along with his sister and brother-in-law. Chino Anthrax was born and grew up with a close-knit and respected family in Culiacan, a city in Sinaloa, Mexico. Sinaloa is known to be home or the birthplace of some of the biggest drug lords in the world, like El Chapo, Rafael Caro Quintero, and El Mayo, just to name a few. Growing up, he lived next door to the sons of El Mayo and would become good friends with them throughout the years. Once old enough, Chino would attempt to join the Mexican military, but couldn't pass the physical exam because of a skin condition he had. Disappointed, he would then shift his focus to school, where he began studying to obtain an architecture degree, but after three years would have to drop out to support his new wife and daughter. In need of money, Chino would turn to his childhood friends from Culiacan, who had a solution. They would plug Chino into their father's faction of the Sinaloa cartel, where he would start off handling small errands for the cartel. His responsibilities grew over the years as he became the personal bodyguard to one of El Mayo's sons and other members of his family. That role would eventually lead Chino to start in Los Anthrax in 2008, which would work with El Mayo directly as a security and his squad after the Sinaloa cartel and the Beltran La Vea cartel split and engaged in a bloody war against one another. In 2009, after one of El Mayo's sons, Vicente, would be arrested, Chino would be chosen to step in as the replacement. Now in control of Vicente's operation, Chino's rank within the cartel will rise to the point he will be chosen by El Mayo to oversee Culiacan, which will become the base of operations for Los Anthrax. Once in power, Chino showed a willingness to murder, as Los Anthrax would be involved in some of the bloodiest battles in Mexico's history. He will also come up with a plan to get drugs over the border, using legitimate trucking companies which will bring in millions of dollars and make him a big time player within the cartel. His presence and popularity rose during this time, and Chino will be mentioned in some narco corridors, which are Mexican folk songs glorifying the drug trade. But over the next few years, Los Anthrax would lose most of his leadership to death or prison after many fierce gun battles with rival cartels and the Mexican army. In 2012, with things in disarray, El Mayo would remove Chino from the day-to-day -day activities of Los Anthrax while he sorted things out. Chino would return to Los Cabos where he had lived for years. During this time, Chino would also find out about an upcoming drug indictment on him out of San Diego after being caught on a wiretap with dealers from the area. Now facing more heat from the U.S. authorities, Chino, although some are not sure it was him, would start to pop up on social media showing off his wealth and some amazing pictures. Yachts, gold-plated guns, foreign cars, and even a night in Vegas with Paris Hilton will all be shown on pages reportedly linked to Chino Anthrax. His calling card will be a diamond skull ring that all Anthrax leaders had. He would make the ring slightly visible in some of the pics. The U.S. authorities were hot on his heels, studying the pics to see if they were real and to also try to figure out where Chino was hiding or traveling to next. Their hard work would pay off after Chino was arrested on December 30th, 2013 at the Schaffel Airport in Amsterdam, Netherlands at the request of the United States. Chino was taken into custody at the airport traveling under a fraudulent name as he was getting off his flight from Mexico City to Amsterdam. The indictment against Chino out of San Diego was unsealed a few days later on January 3rd, 2014. Months of court proceedings followed and on July 10th, 2014, Chino was extradited from Amsterdam to the United States to face the charges against him. Once again, months of court proceedings would follow, and on March 20, 2015, Chino would plead guilty and admit that he had participated in cocaine and marijuana shipments from Mexico to the United States, and that he had facilitated violent activities for the Sinaloa cartel. Now here's where things get a little complicated. Chino wouldn't be sentenced till December 2019, when he was given 87 months in prison and five years supervised release. Already having been in U.S. custody for years, he was released to house arrest on March 3, 2020. The short sentence and early release raised some questions of the Chino snitching and the cooperating with the U.S. government for a lighter sentence. Although Chino never took the stand of anybody, many people within the cartel felt he cooperated in some way. On May 9, 2020, Chino's probation officer would report him as missing. Chino and all his belongings were gone from his residence. Only thing left behind was his cell phone. Now on the run from U.S. authorities, everybody involved figured that Chino would be turning to Sinaloa and the cartel. But some thought it was a bad idea, as they looked at Chino as a dead man walking once he returned to Mexico, 
because of the snitch allegations on his name. On the night of May 15th, Chino was kidnapped in Sinaloa, Mexico by unknown armed men along with his sister and brother-in-law after a gun battle. The next day, police discovered a black SUV with what appeared to be three dead bodies inside. One of the bodies was later identified as Chino. He was shot dead and wrapped in a cloth. His head was covered with a black plastic bag. The other two bodies belonged to his sister and brother-in-law. It was later reported that his murder was likely carried out by the senior leaders of the Sinaloa cartel. In the days after, there were no retaliatory attacks in Sinaloa for Chino, further cemented that it was his own cartel that had him killed. But yo, it's What's the Numbers TV. This is a quick profile piece on Chino Anthrax. I ain't seen too many people do a story on him. I felt like doing one because, you know, he was in Mexico doing what he do. You know, was a hitman, had to, was a plug out there. But he also was stepping for the United States as far as coming to fights, partying all across the world, traveling, you know what I'm saying? And um, I felt like doing a video on him because it's something that I ain't seen too many do. But his story was kind of big, you know what I'm saying? He was on Instagram, just like a lot of dudes in the United States that get money. They go on Instagram to show their wealth. He was doing the same thing and it helped him get caught also. So I feel like doing this story on Chino. Hopefully y'all appreciate this one. I know y'all love the Brooklyn Drill, the, the scamming stories, the rapper stories. I'm coming back to those, but I just, you know, I like to switch it up here and there. And um, I've been slacking a little bit with the videos, y'all. I, I apologize to all y'all, you know, but there's so much going on in the world with all the protests, the virus running around. You know, I just needed to get my mind right. But in July, I'm locking back in. I got a bunch of stories ready to come out. I got certain people reaching out to me just for stories, you know what I'm saying? So we'll see what we do with all that. But like I said, it's What's Numbers TV. Make sure you subscribe, share, all that good stuff. Go check out the Instagram. Follow up over there. We'll be back before you know it, man. It's What's Numbers TV. It's your boy, Poe Row. We had 30, we over 30,000 subs. I appreciate all y'all, man. Keep supporting. And I swear, I got more stuff coming for y'all. Starting in July, we about to flood again. But yo, it's What's Numbers TV. It's your boy, Poe Row. We out of here. Peace.